teams, nomenclature, and navigation. We are going to start from common ground. We are going to use the same language, and we're going to help create clarity and comfort. Hi, I'm Nate from MyTech Partners. Welcome to an episode of MyTech Briefs. Today we are covering teams, nomenclature, and navigation. We're going to learn the language of teams, the basic navigation of teams, and we're going to help create greater comfort for those who are new to teams. Now, before we dig into the content, here's an honorable mention of our mug sponsor, waffle, hamburger, and breadcrumbs. That's a lot of carbs. If you aren't hungry now, you will be by the end of the session. Now let's get started with exploring teams, nomenclature, and navigation. The language and navigation of teams. It's really important to create clarity and comfort and understanding for those that you're trying to introduce to teams that when you speak the language of teams, they know what you're talking about. So I like to start by looking at the browser. Whenever you're logged into Microsoft or the Microsoft 365 environment or office.com portal, uh, you will see a waffle in the upper left hand corner. I like to illustrate this and this is what it looks like in Teams uh, because we're in the browser. So the waffle is a menu that you're going to see uh, in the browser all the time. Um, I am now going to move over to the Teams application to talk about the next one, which is the hamburger icon or the hamburger menu. Uh, it can show up here. Uh, as well as here, uh, if you happen to be using a wiki tab. Sometimes the wiki tab is renamed, uh, but inside of the wiki you'll see this hamburger, uh, the three vertical or horizontal lines, and you'll see this hamburger as well. And it just allows you to close or open up certain uh, menu sections. So that's the hamburger. The one that you're going to see the most often, which is the most prolific across all of Teams, across all of SharePoint and other applications within the Microsoft 365 environment, is the breadcrumbs. Uh, because it's so prolific, you have to be very careful and very specific about the breadcrumbs you're talking about. The breadcrumbs are these three little dots. Uh, now, the trick with breadcrumbs is because these are here and you just see them. Uh, but some you don't see until, for instance, I'm going to hover over this next level down. Now the breadcrumbs appear. If I have a, hover over the next level down, now these breadcrumbs appear. The other challenge with breadcrumbs is that they also appear on this far left navigation menu. They also appear all the way over here uh, in the upper right hand corner. And so when you refer to the breadcrumbs or you're talking to your team about breadcrumbs or you say, hey, that, that's in the breadcrumbs, be specific about which, uh, which one you're looking at. The other thing that I like to mention is that in teams, typically you're going to see the breadcrumbs horizontal like you see here. Uh, in SharePoint, uh, oftentimes you will see them vertical and you'll have to hover over to see them. So just be aware you could see breadcrumbs horizontally or vertically and they're everywhere. Sometimes you have to hover over them, sometimes they're already there, uh, but be specific when you're referring to the breadcrumbs. But there's almost always more actions, more options, uh, plenty of other options to look at uh, and capabilities when you click on breadcrumbs. Okay, so now I wanna look at the primary menu on this side. I'm not gonna cover every last thing in detail. I'm just gonna cover some of the basics from a navigation perspective. So this is the activity belt. I love the activity belt because uh, you, know, you go into a meeting or you step away, or you come back in the morning, um, any activity that you might have missed, if you want to catch up on it, you just go through this. And it literally will take you, when you click on this, oh, Nina mentioned MyTech. It takes me exactly to where uh, the activity was mentioned or where I need to pay attention or maybe review the message that was delivered. So that's what I love about the activity bell. It's an easy way to catch up. It's kind of like your unread uh, messages in your email to some extent. Uh, moving on to chat. Uh, chat is just what you think it is. Uh, chat, it's a, it's a one on one chat. Uh, it could also be a group chat or one to many. Uh, and it's just like a, a text message or a group text message. Very similar uh, functionality. And this is the, the menu where you can navigate that. We're getting into more aspects of chat in another session, but today we're just covering the navigation perspective. Uh, the next section down is the Teams section of Teams. Uh, and forgive my chuckle because uh, I always love the fact that Microsoft called the application itself Teams. Uh, there is a menu on the left side called Teams uh, where, they, where you build out and collaborate with your Teams. Uh, so this, uh, when you're looking at the, at the Teams environment, the Teams application, the Teams menu navigation here on the left-hand side, the parent level here are called teams. So this is a team 
this is a team, this is a team. These subsections are called channels. Uh, again, channel, the general channel, the Best Buy Projects channel, uh, general channel, board governance and search channel. There are different types of channels which we will cover in other sessions and dig into some of the nuances and details of those. However, we just want to make sure that you understand the basic language of the navigation between teams and channels. Um, once you get into a channel, uh, the main section of a channel, if you click on this tab right here at the top, all of the channels start with a posts tab and a files tab. So the posts is where you can have uh, create and start new conversations. This is slightly different than what a chat does because you're chatting, you're communicating with everyone that's a member of this team, which is different from a chat because it's only the one-on-one -on -one or the members you've added to that group, uh, but you don't have to add them to this team. So we'll get into, again, some of the nuances of communicating within a team in another session, uh, but for this, understand that the post section of a channel, because uh, every channel can have different posts, uh, is where you can start and create new conversations. Uh, the other part that I like to illustrate about the tabs, these are called tabs across the top, is the uh, files tab. The files tab is where uh, this documentation, files, will live, uh, and these are files that are relative to the team and the channel that you're in. Uh, and uh, basically, it's giving a view into SharePoint. So that's a good uh, hint for the future. Uh, teams and SharePoint are integrated. Whenever you have a team, it makes a corresponding SharePoint site. And this is where you can access the files that are part of that SharePoint site. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned, these are the tabs across the top. And this little plus icon here is where you can add other tabs and really customize the experience of each individual channel can be added uh, by adding tabs and customizing tabs. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, the calendar section. Now, this is a relatively simplistic view. Uh, the calendar, it's, you know, it uh, is not as, it doesn't give you as many options as the calendar in Outlook does, uh, but they are synchronized. So your calendar view in Outlook and your calendar view in Teams should be identical, and so they are synced. Uh, this is where you can, up here, you can schedule, a, start a new meeting or, or schedule a new meeting, uh, and that will synchronize again with your Outlook calendar. The other thing, just like you can with your Outlook calendar, but if you click on this, uh, one of the team meetings here, it uh, will also pop up the ability to join uh, that meeting right from your uh, team's calendar. Uh, so why, uh, if this is uh, somewhat basic compared to Teams, this is where you can schedule things within Teams. Again, we'll show that uh, in another session. But this is also, uh, the point is, it's, it's fewer clicks to get your job done. So if you can, uh, if you're already in Teams and you can navigate to the calendar to join that meeting, as opposed to going into Outlook, clicking on the calendar and navigating to it, if it's fewer clicks, uh, then might as well do it inside of Teams. So uh, that's the calendar section of Teams. The one other section um, or area that I like to show uh, from a basic navigation perspective is all the way up here in the corner. Uh, it's where your profile lives. Sometimes your company name will exist here, um, but this is where you can update. Notice there's a little calendar kind of, or not calendar, a camera uh, icon there. This is where you can have like a thumbnail of your profile picture that will show up throughout the Microsoft 365 uh, environment. Uh, I always like to show that. This is also where um, th this little indicator dot here, this green indicator dot, uh, what Teams will automatically do is it'll give you the little um, status bubble uh, that will be based on your what's on your calendar. Um, so it'll automatically change based on what you have in your calendar. However, sometimes you might want to set it automatically or manually. Uh, excuse me, not automatically, but manually. So this is where you can also choose to set it manually. And this is also where you can choose the duration if you want to set it or reset it back to its current status. Um, so again, this is really just a basic language, nomenclature, and navigation of teams so that when you're working with your team and trying to bring new, uh, new people in particular up to speed and, and get them to feel comfortable about teams, um, have, being on the same page about the language is really important, and we really hope that this session uh, helps start your journey relative to Teams uh, language, nomenclature, and navigation. We hope this MyTech Brief on Teams nomenclature and navigation will help you create clarity and comfort for those new to Teams, which will help make it easier to drive adoption of Teams capabilities. If you enjoyed this MyTech Brief, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel for future MyTech Brief sessions. And check out MyTech.com for everything else we do to make IT easy for our clients. Thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you soon. Until then, be productive and stay secure.